This is David Prosper, host of the Leadership Revolution. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast from Public House Media. Hello, my friend. It's Julianne Condia, the host of Rewritten. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for being a part of this podcast. It has been going on for a couple years now, and I love hearing from you. I love getting a tag. I love getting a message. I just love hearing how the episode spoke to you. So after this one, if you could screenshot it and upload it to Instagram and tag me at Julianne Condia, I would be so incredibly grateful. I hope that you are finding yourself to be filled up with joy and perspective and all the things. Happy fourth quarter. It is here. It is among us. I cannot believe that we are here in this time in this year. It has been such an uncertain year filled with maybe on your end, fear and worry and anxiety. I definitely have felt it at some points and other points. I've tried to make the best of it and I have realized what is important and just getting creative with things. I chose to dive in during this year to work on myself, work on goals, and I'm really grateful for that. I'm really also thankful that this can be the face of a 2020 CEO, someone who's a mom, a wife, someone who wants to have flexible hours and still make impact and still make a growing income. And so I just want to encourage you that anything is possible, that you can rewrite that, that you can become the face of whatever dreams you want to to have. And I think the biggest thing lately, and I mean, probably over the last few years, when I'm mentoring, a big fear people have is the fear of judgment of other people. They don't want to be salesy. They don't want to be too much. They don't want to say the wrong things. They want to know and have all the information. They don't want to say anything wrong. They're apologetic. They're very, I would say, when you're first starting, fragile. And I just want to encourage you to be brave and share your story and own it and be confident and realize you don't have to have all of the facts and all of the information. If you just lead with your journey and lead with trusting the process, you're going to learn so much. It's going to be so great. And so I was just thinking about this. Faye and Eric are gone and it's Wyatt and I. And if you know my dog, Wyatt, he's very clingy and he's very cute. And I was just thinking about how I love that I get to be home with him. I love that he doesn't know a different way. And I'm just really thankful that we are doing what we're doing because a lot of people were against it or thought it was weird or whatever. I don't know. Maybe didn't take us seriously. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. This is, I would never give it back. If someone was like, what you're doing is silly. I would not be like, you're right. I should just listen to you and go be stressed out and underpaid and you know, just do the thing because society says that. That's crazy talk, but it's easy to say that now. It's not easy to say that before that happens. And for me, I just had to get really crystal clear on my vision and my why and the choices I wanted. And so that fear of judgment became way less of an obstacle. I cared more about how I was feeling. I cared way more about the results that I was getting. I cared more about my happiness, the joy I had, the fulfillment, the way and where I was going. I cared more about the people who were in my corner cheering for me than the people who weren't, who felt like they knew better. And I just want to encourage you, my friend, this fourth quarter is a great time for you to just keep chipping away at your goal. So I'm a mentor to an incredible community, Happy and Fit. They were my dream six years ago, and I love doing life with them. They're my friends. They're my family. They are people that I believe so hard in. I love that they work on their self-care, and I also love that they're not afraid to go for it, that they want more choices in life, that they want to feel their absolute best. They want to earn income that is done from their phone from their home and while making an impact, right? They want to they wanna fit work in around life instead of fitting life around work. 
And I think there's a huge difference with that. And so as we were talking, we're talking about the fourth quarter and a pandemic. You can choose. You can decide how you want to finish this year. Yes, there will be some obstacles that come your way, maybe heart break and heartache and all the things, but I really want you to think about how you want to create momentum going into this holiday season. You can still enjoy the holidays, unplug, do all the things, and still get closer to your goals. I've done this for the last six years, almost seven years during the holidays of continuing to inch myself forward. So friend, I have a question for you, and I want you to be reflective with this of really giving your time to journal this think about it is what went well in quarter three. Maybe you stuck to your workouts. What went well, maybe you had family dinners at the dinner table. Maybe what went well is that you reduced your TV watching time. Maybe what went well is that you FaceTimed a friend every week. Maybe what went well is that you hit a really big goal in your business. You earned more income. What went well is maybe you got a really positive review. What went well? Maybe your water intake, your nutrition, what went well? Then I want you to think about in quarter three is what challenges did you have? I'm sure COVID, the quarantine, isolation, whatever it is, maybe that was a challenge, feeling lonely and isolated. Maybe a challenge was that you experienced loss and heartbreak. Maybe a challenge you had is that you weren't feeling motivated and you let your routine go. Maybe a challenge was simply getting out of bed when your alarm went off. What kind of challenges did you have? And I just want to say, if you're listening to this, I think it's pretty amazing that you're choosing to lean into self-growth in the midst of challenging times. I think that's really beautiful. I think it's really cool that you want to set goals for these next few months. You want to go somewhere. You want to inch forward. Then the next question is, is that what are your opportunities for growth? What are your opportunities for growth? Maybe you want to grow in working on your mindset every single day. Maybe you want to grow in your faith. Maybe you want to grow with sharing your story more being more brave and and less afraid of what people have to say or think. Maybe your opportunities for growth is being coachable. Maybe your opportunities for growth are creating a solid routine. Maybe your opportunities for growth is not hitting snooze. And then the last question before we get started with our fourth quarter goal setting is what was the biggest lesson you gained from the last three months. I think for me and something that I shared with my team and my community is that everything adds up. That's probably my lesson. Everything adds up. We hit the biggest goal in quarter three. It was so massive. It was so big. And I just remember thinking it all added up. Every time I chose to work on myself, every conversation I had, the belief that I had, it all just added up. What was your biggest lesson? Grace was your biggest lesson that you can still show up in the midst of sadness and pain? Was your biggest lesson that being present brings you so much joy? Was your biggest lesson that the opinions of other people don't pay your bills? What was your biggest lesson? In fact, I would love it if you'd screenshot this episode and tag me on what your biggest lesson was. I would love to hear about that. So as you're going into the fourth quarter, I want you to think about a word, a word that would describe your future self in the next few months. Maybe your word is belief. You're going to have more belief. That's something that my friend Danny wrote. Maybe your word is committed. I'm going to be more committed to myself and my self-care journey. I want you to think about a word and I want you to write it down every day. I want you to see it. I want you to visualize yourself with that word. Maybe it's more present, more open, action-taking, whatever that word may be. I want you to really think about how this can support your fourth quarter goals. And then as you're going with your goals, I want you to think about the different roles you have in your life. 
And I love setting goals around my different roles. For example, I love setting a goal with my marriage of I want to pray with Eric each night or I want a date night once a week. I want to continue to go to our life group each week, whatever it may be, setting goals around the roles you have in your life. As a mom, maybe you want to be a more present mom. Well, what does that mean? I need to turn off the notifications in my phone. And if you're like me, I need to put my phone in a completely different room. It is super easy to want to be on and working and distracted. And I just want to be disciplined. I want to have structure, right? I want you to think about work. What are your goals around work? For me, I have some pretty hefty goals I want to hit in the next three months. But the thing is, and this is something that I had to share with my team is that it's never really about the deadline you set for yourself because a lot of times what happens is when that deadline comes and goes, you feel defeated when you don't hit it. It's not so much about hitting it as it is just choosing to go for it and chip away at it each and every single day. I know that that will build more momentum for me whether I hit my goal or not. It matters more that I set it and that I continue to put action towards it. That matters most. If your goal is to work out more consistently, there will be weeks that you're not. But don't you think that you are setting yourself apart from who you were then and who you are now? That the more you're showing up, even if it's, and we're not chasing perfectionism, that you're farther along now than you were six months ago, six weeks ago, six years ago. That's how I think when I'm sitting, setting my goals. So for me, I set income goals. I set right personal goals and I set certain business goals that help me. I could set goals around hobbies, maybe more self-care time. But friend, it is quarter four and there is so much time. There's so much potential. And I just think that you can position yourself to create more momentum for 2021 instead of waiting for January 1. And did you know that the average weight gain during the holidays is 10 to 15 pounds? You do not want to wake up on January 1st thinking, dang it, I am so much farther from my goals. I want you to chip away at this, still enjoy the holidays, and create more momentum for yourself so you're not finding yourself on January 1 finally starting. The time is now. You've got this. These next few months are going to be incredible. They can help shape you, give you momentum, and help you. So friends, let's get after it. Happy fourth quarter. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Time to go rewrite your story. Until next time.